welcome to another installment of Johnny Mac's Bring That Mac Back, where we take an older Mac and bring new life into it. Today we will be taking a 2011 27-inch iMac and upgrading it to the Catalina operating system. The first step is to download the macOS Catalina Patcher from DOS Dude. Uh, do a Google search of unsupported Catalina and the first option will bring you to his website. Go ahead and click on the download link at the top of the screen. macOS Catalina Patcher is a tool that allows you to create a macOS installer for unsupported machines. A list of unsupported machines that the Patcher supports is available on the website. Once downloaded, drag the macOS Catalina Patcher to your Applications folder. It would also be a good idea at this time to uh, get your hands on a copy of the macOS Catalina Installer, either from the App Store or Apple directly or another support machine, and also place that installer in the Applications folder as well. With everything downloaded, it's time to run the macOS Catalina Patcher. This screen allows you to choose either to download the latest version of the macOS Catalina installer or select a version you've already downloaded. In this case, we will select a version we've already downloaded. macOS Catalina Patcher supports two installation methods. Uh, you can install onto a bootable USB drive or you can install onto the active hard drive that's running the Patcher application. For this installation of macOS Catalina, we will be installing onto a USB flash drive. Keep in mind, any data on the flash drive you choose to install will be erased in the creation of the drive. With the creation of the bootable installer complete, uh, it is time to shut down the machine and begin the installation process. Power on the machine and immediately hold down the option key to get into the bootloader. Select the Catalina installer and wait for the installer screen to appear. Once booted to the utilities menu, proceed and install Catalina as you would on any other machine. As with previous macOS installs, if you're trying to install an operating system on an HFS plus extended formatted drive, the installer will convert that drive over to APFS during the installation process. Unfortunately, macOS Catalina requires an APFS volume and it cannot be installed on a drive that doesn't support it. When the installation is complete uh, and the machine reboots, immediately hold down the option key and once again boot into the Catalina Patcher. This time, when the utility menu is loaded, choose the bottom option for Post Installs. The Post Install patches are automatically selected based on your machine's model. Uh, let the patches install, and I prefer to rebuild the caches when it's complete. With the post install complete, you can now boot and complete the Catalina installation. Once logged into a desktop, the Catalina Patcher software updates will run. Uh, go ahead and run those. Uh, there's some additional software that I recommend installing as well at this time. Depending on your hardware configuration, you might have some thermal issues and excessive fan noise. I like to use a program called Max Fan Control to manually link temp sensors to the respective fans. In this case, I will be linking the graphics or GPU heatsink to the optical drive fan 
I will be linking the built-in temp sensor and the solid state drive to the hard drive fan and then the CPU fan will be linked directly to the uh, temperature sensor on the CPU heatsink. There is another issue uh, when running Catalina on unsupported hardware and that has to do with the backlight. Apple's built-in uh, kernel extension for backlight control doesn't have the necessary steps to give the full range of brightness for these older LCDs. Luckily there are tools from the Hackintosh community that will help resolve this issue. Utilizing the free Hackintool app you can manually install a modified third-party Apple Backlight Fix-Up extension. Uh, this extension was created to specifically resolve this issue and allowing the full range of brightness on these older LCDs. After selecting the kernel extension, it is very important that you select the System folder, Library folder, Extension folder for its destination. With the rebuild of the caches and the repairs of the permissions complete, it is time to restart the Mac and enjoy the full brightness of the display. With the restart complete and no additional macOS Catalina Patcher third-party software updates to run, it is safe to open up system preferences and run Apple's built-in software updates. As the software updates complete their installation, so concludes our installation of Catalina on an unsupported iMac. Just goes to show that these old Macs still have a lot of life left in them. If you have any questions or if you enjoyed watching this video, please feel free to leave a comment. And thanks again, and have a great day.